Is Spotify the next potential fang stock? That's a question I would like to dive into in this video. Of course, it is a big ask for any company, let alone a young Swedish audio business to become the next behemoth of tech, but audio is one of the fastest growing mediums ahead of even video, and Spotify shares many of the same qualities and characteristics as the fang companies when they were at this stage in their business and with a sub $50 billion market cap. Most notably, the similarities they share with Netflix and Google's YouTube make for a compelling case study on what is possible in content streaming when feedback loops and network effects are present. And in the case of Netflix, it proves that with a singular focus and singular mission like Spotify has, you can really beat the big guys. And we can see here what happened post-2012 with Netflix. Once they made the bet to invest in original content and reinvest back into the platform, to solidify themselves as the leading video streaming provider of its kind in the world. Its revenue compounded at not crazy rates as we can see, but consistently above 20%. And even after seeing this play out for three years, investors who bought Netflix in say 2015 and 2016 would have sought a 5x return on their investment in just five short years. And so I'm not suggesting that we're gonna see a 5x return on our investment from Spotify by 2026 but it provides some clarity on what is possible for this business and warrants investigating further, in my opinion. So I'll be doing so, and I'll be doing a deep dive right up on Spotify in February at some point, just like uh, Mercado Libre this month. But today in this video, I'll be analyzing the stock and discussing the investment opportunity in some detail, and you can see if you're interested in Spotify. Now, just before we jump into the analysis, I wanna give a shout out to Ticker Terminal and the guys over there who have built, in my opinion, the best value for money stock analysis and research platform that is available today. As you would all have probably seen from my previous videos, I and a lot of other of the value investing community here on YouTube, use Ticker for stock analysis, stock screening, and guru tracking on a daily basis. As you can see here, you get everything from relevant news on your selected stocks, financials, that date back 15 years or more, not for Spotify because it's a young company, but if it's available, you also get valuation metrics, a whole heap of them, things like uh, enterprise value to gross profit, free cash flow yield, EV to sales, EV to EBITDA, as well as all of the other uh, traditional methods. You also get up to five years of, of analyst estimates, which as we'll see in this video is very useful, especially when you're doing analysis on uh, the business or potential investment. And additionally to that, you also get the transcripts, all the transcripts in the investor calls and investor presentations as well that you don't usually get uh, on the website and you will get access to all of the latest company SEC filing. So both of those things, very essential if you're going to be doing a deep dive into an investment opportunity or any business for that fact. Now, as mentioned, you also can track your favorite investors or guru investors uh, and their portfolio moves on a quarterly basis. That includes uh, almost all super investors that are, I think are, are relevant and hedge funds as well that fly under the radar. They are mostly all available on ticker so long as they file a 13F. So I use this to track some of my favorite investors' latest buys and sells on a quarterly basis and come back to, to reference it a lot of the time. And then lastly, but not Limited to, we have this global screener with screens for businesses based off of any combination of metrics that you are looking for, as you can see here. And I have got an affiliate partnership with Ticker now. So if you're interested in checking out the platform, you can click on my link below, which is ticker.com forward slash finding alpha. And you can sign up for either a free plan, which is US stocks and limited tools and data, or the pro plan which gives you access to everything. If you decide to go pro and sign up today like I have uh, using my link, you will receive a significant lifetime discount, but this is only available for a limited time only. I will receive a small commission on any signups just so you are aware. So by signing up, you're not only getting great value for money out of the platform, but you're also helping to support the channel here. So thank you for that and thank you to Ticker. Anyway, back to the video. So let's briefly discuss why I like Spotify and what actually is special about Spotify as a business. So the internal framework. And I wanna start by looking at some of the compounder qualities that the business possesses. The first being that a large portion of their revenue, roughly 90% is from premium subscriptions that are recurring in nature and highly sticky. Obviously something that is very sought after and is a sign of business quality as well. If people have 
revenues or most of their revenues are recurring and sticky in nature. It means that the company doesn't have to keep going out each year and earning new revenues. And actually, if its retention rate is good, it's only got to get a small number of new users or monetized users a bit more effectively in the next year to have some significant growth. Now, the next thing is network effects. This is a buzzword that gets thrown around uh, quite a lot in tech businesses, but Spotify most definitely benefits from a network effect. The more users they have on the platform, the more attractive they become to audio content creators who want to monetize their work, and the more variety and depth of content they have available on their platform, the more users that will gravitate to the platform. And so the feedback loop continues. And why network effects are so sought after is because in some ways, it allows businesses that are already the biggest and leading the field to advance even quicker and essentially defy the laws of, of economic gravity is one way of putting it. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Google, Amazon, among many others are all prime examples of this in the modern world. Now, the next thing, and it sort of ties in with both of the above, is that Spotify is a clear market leader with hints of monopoly or duopoly characteristics that uh, this market has. It has a clear advantage over its biggest competitors, that it's Apple, Amazon, and Google, with it being solely focused on one mission and one platform, and that being the audio streaming business. And their mission is to become not just the leading music and podcast provider in the world, but to be the audio browser of the world, all within one single platform, just like Google is for search and YouTube is for video. And I think the power of this playbook and this mission is evidenced in their 365 million monthly active users and 165 million premium subscribers, more than Apple and Amazon's audio businesses combined. And the fact they've been growing faster than those competitors from an even bigger base speaks volumes in my opinion as well. Now, switching over a bit onto the outside perspective and talking more about the stock and Spotify as an investment opportunity. Well, first of all, I think the fact that it's a $40 billion market cap, and that's relatively small if we're talking about the possibility of it following in the footsteps of a fang name, right? Even getting close to emulating what they've done. And it still has plenty of room to run in dollar terms if we're looking at it from this perspective. Now, of course, that is not enough to warrant calling it an investment opportunity. But if we're going to compare it to its TAM, to its TAM opportunity, we see that Spotify has less than 10% penetration of its $100 billion TAM. And that TAM is made up of music streaming, that TAM opportunity, which is supposedly going to be in the region of 70 billion by 2027. That isn't even considering the other audio mediums like uh, podcasts, radio broadcasting, audiobooks, and live social audio that are growing even faster and present probably a combined future TAM in the region of say 30 to $50 billion. So Spotify is, is only a tiny eclipse of that at the moment. So we have a business that is doing $10 billion in revenue today, just shy of that, in a potential revenue pool of say 100 billion. So being that they're the market leader and the ones innovating the most to ensure they have the best and most diverse user and creator platform, and they have this sticky recurring revenue, I think there is a very good chance that they'll continue to be the market leader going into that $100 billion opportunity. Now, getting more into the hidden value that sits within Spotify, again, we're going to go back to Ticker. And thanks to Ticker, as we get the five-year analyst consensus data going forward, the forward estimates, we can analyze those and see what we think about and whether we think the market is underestimating what Spotify can do in the future. And although I don't tend to lean on uh, analyst consensus estimates, most of the market does, so it inevitably plays into the price of the stock. So if real results outperform analyst consensus, you can usually expect a lot of movement or upside in the stock price. Now, I'm not saying that these estimates are definitely wrong, and I'm right, but I do think that consensus estimates are quite bearish. Firstly, they've got revenue growth for the next five years at around 16%, or whilst uh, the surrounding market is expected to grow at almost double the pace, right? If we equally weight music, podcasts, radio broadcasting, and audiobooks. And actually, if you look at Spotify's last two, three quarters, uh, as we're going to do here, revenue is actually speeding back up from, from where it did dip a bit lower in 2020. So if anything, we're seeing momentum move towards the upside than actually trailing or trending back down. 
And so this feeds into what we're talking about with network effects and recurring revenues that uh, we spoke about back in the business qualities. I tend to think that with the development of original content in podcasts where revenue is growing at 200% at the moment, uh, radio broadcasting and ads, which Spotify uh, now has as a, a billion dollar business that's growing at 70% year over year. And we've we've got the entry into audiobooks with the latest acquisition, which is currently a 3 billion TAM expected to hit 15 billion in five years, as well as the expansion into new markets. I think Spotify will be able to grow revenues uh, closer to say 20 to mid 20s, 20 to 25% for the next five years. So quite a bit above what the market or analysts are expecting. Now, in addition to this, I think when we look at gross margins, analysts could be playing down what is possible for Spotify over the next five years and, and underestimating its ability to scout its gross margins. For instance, in the past five years, uh, let me just flip this to annual, sorry. We've seen gross margins scale from 13.6% to 26.8% in just five years. And this has been whilst the focus has been around music streaming, which is costly for the business because of all the royalties involved and things like that. Right now, if we go by ticket data, the majority of gross profit, or almost all of gross profit, sorry, is coming from the premium business, the premium subscription business. Almost none of the gross profit is coming from the ad-supported revenue business, which is the freemium users, mainly compensates for podcasts and uh, and the other businesses, supporting businesses uh, at the moment, which are running at a gross profit margin of, of, of almost nothing versus 28% for the premium subscriptions. Now, fast forwarding to 2021, ad supported revenue monetization rates are growing fast with ad supported users growing at 19%, but revenue from those users growing at 75%. So, This has led to a gross margin expansion in the ad revenue business from negative 5% in 2020 to 9% in this year's first three quarters in 2021. What's more significant is that Spotify receives the vast majority of its ad revenue and profit in the fourth quarter due to increased advertiser demand during the holiday season and higher CPM rates, which isn't included in these figures at all. So I'd expect this gross margin number in the ad supported segment to actually rise fairly significantly if we're looking at full year 2021, which again is something that's not baked in to analyst estimates. And so we've got a $1 billion ads business that is growing revenues at 75% year over year and margins are expanding at this trend tenfold, all whilst still in aggressive growth mode for this side of the business with investments back into content and the platform. And on the topic of improving margins, we have to consider the bottom line. At the end of the day, uh, EPS and, and free cash flow is what matters in the long term. And you can see based off of what I've done here, just previous years, cost versus gross profit, that they do have some significant operating leverage. Just running through, you can see that operating expenses have grown an average of 18% over the past four years, whereas gross profit is growing at around 31%. So that delta sits at around 12%, almost double the growth rate in gross profit versus the expenses or or bottom line costs of the company. So what actually is taken out of those gross profit dollars only growing at 18%. Now, inevitably, if this trend continues, we'll see quite meaningful margins for Spotify in the future. And just as a demonstration, I've pulled forward here uh, up to 2025. In theory, if this trend continues, implied EBIT would be around $3.2 billion for Spotify, which is a very, very good number considering where the stock price is today. And now let's look at Spotify in a hypothetical DCF model. Again, it's hypothetical. I'm just trying to show you what needs to be done or what Spotify would need to do in order to be a good investment from these levels. And actually, I think you'll find uh, it's not very outlandish at all and actually something I think Spotify are are well capable of. So just looking at top line growth, first of all, 25% going into the next few years, I do think that podcast business and the uh, ad revenue business growing at 75% and 200% respectively, that's over a billion dollar business. I do think that's going to carry the growth rate upwards of 20%, what analysts expect in for the next couple of years. The core subscription business and the music streaming business is growing at around 20% anyway. So this is just going to give it a bit of a lift. And then I'm happy for the last two years to sit around 20%. This averages a 23% CAGR, right? Gross profit margins, I think, will improve, similar to the trend we've seen in previous years, at around 5% each year. So that's not 5% each point, 
but 5% on the previous year's gross margin. So that gets us to around 34% in gross margins and 10 billion in gross profit by 2026. EBITDA and free cash flow, I think we'll get to around 12.5%. What I've done here uh, is just take my operating leverage model, which implies that we could reach 3.2 billion in EBIT by 2025 if the current trends in uh, operating leverage continue. So that gets us to around 3.2 in 2025 and then 3.8 in 2026. Now, if you apply a 25 times free cash flow multiple to this, uh, or a 10 times gross profit multiple. Just bear in mind at the moment, it's around 14 times gross profit. So a little bit of a contraction, but uh, I'd rather do that than, than go with an outlandish multiple. So 10 times gross profit, 25 times free cash flow. That gets us to a terminal value for the business of around 100 billion uh, in 2026, which implies that the shares are undervalued today by around 16%. And that's going off of a discount rate of 15%. So if your hurdle rate of return is 15%, this implies an IRR around 18%. And I use 15% again just because it is my hurdle rate of return, my opportunity cost of capital. But that's just a quick demonstration of what Spotify needs to do. 30 billion in revenue, around three and a half billion in free cash flow. And I think that would be a very good return from where the price is today if they can achieve those outcomes. Now, like I said, I will be doing a deep dive into Spotify later this month. And do a write-up in February on the Patreon deep dive write-up, and this will most likely be a monthly recurrence where I do a deep dive on a new company with compounding potential each month. That will help me confirm whether I think these forecasts here realistic, conservative, or uh, too over-bullish, or too over-optimistic, sorry, should I say. Obviously, I can't say that with a huge amount of conviction at the moment because I haven't done enough work uh, on the business to be able to say that with any certainty. So go ahead and check that out and check the Patreon details and other benefits if you're interested in seeing this deep dive and supporting the channel uh, that way and getting some benefits like this in return. But that will be all for this video, guys. Hopefully it was a good insight into Spotify and why it could potentially be a good investment in 2022. Hopefully you enjoyed it and I'll see you all in the next one. Good luck with your investments.